Hey guys, CB Super. I'm in a new tool. It's called the CB Liquid tool. It's mostly for motion design and motion graphics, but you can use it for other things. You can use it as a mask. You can use it for masking out anything that might need to go into water or anything like that. You can also use it for creating backgrounds for motion graphics because I felt like I've kind of been neglecting the motion graphics side, so I went ahead. I'm coming out with a bunch of tools uh, here in the future that are gonna be very motion graphics specific. So if, you, if that's something that you guys are interested in, please let me know down in the comments. If you want, all you gotta do is uh, come over to cbsuper.com, click on this uh, liquid tool here in the motion graphics. It's gonna automatically download and then you can just go ahead and extract the file and you can load it up into your macros folder. If you're curious on how to actually where to find your macros, there'll be a little blurb in the description that shows you uh, probably where to find it if you're either on a Mac or a PC. So today's video is just going to be a brief overview of how to use the tool. It's very similar to this uh, CB Water tool. The only difference is it's been uh, pared down a little bit and added a little bit of customization just for motion graphics. Without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, launch the intro and we'll get back to it. I'm just kidding, there's no intro. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into Fusion. So what we're gonna be going over is I'm gonna show you how to uh, use that liquid tool to mask things out. So we basically just masked out this boat. Uh, I'm also gonna show you how to use it to really quickly just make uh, backgrounds for motion graphics and how you do this, um, this liquid fill uh, inside of text. It's gonna be really easy and let's go ahead and just jump right into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the tool overview first and then we'll go ahead and talk about what we did in this comp. Alright, so this tool is basically set up as an alpha. The CB Liquid tool is white. There, You can't really color it. Um, you could, I mean, it's real easy to add color and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But the tool itself is an alpha. So if you come over here, you click on the alpha, you'll see that um, whatever's black is transparent, whatever white is not. So that's pretty much the premise for this. We can use it for reveals, wipes, we can use it for animating, any kind of background. By default, if you press the play button, you're gonna notice that it just pretty much undulates up and down. Of course, this is done using a fast noise and a bunch of other different things. The nice thing is that you can change this in live and then see exactly what you're doing. So the wave height, as you can see, if I drop the wave height all the way down, it basically turns it into a flat line. And then I can just start to slowly bring this up and you'll notice that you'll start to get um, some waves. And that's pretty cool. Um, of course, you can you can drive it all the way up and it's going to start getting more towards an actual uh, fast noise pattern, which is why I kind of limited it to 10 because anything higher than this and it starts to break apart pretty well. The default is 5 and that's kind of where I feel it looks the most like water or some kind of liquid. The liquid level is probably the most powerful slider in this. This is what you're gonna be animating all the time. And what it does is all the way down, drops it down, all the way over to the right, brings it all the way up. Of course, you know, if you want it to go left to right, all you have to do is adjust the actual angle of the tool. And again, you can have it reveal on, reveal off, or you can uh, pretty much animate it however you want. Edge scale is basically the size of the pattern. You'll notice if you up the scale, you're gonna get more ripples. If you lower the scale, you're gonna get less ripples. One nice thing about this is if you drop it all the way down, you still have an animating line, which is kind of cool. I'm, I'm sure people will you know, figure out some kind of use for that. Uh, it it kind of animates almost in like a perturbed fashion. The only difference is it's animating via a fast noise. Seethe, if you don't like the way that this is without it flowing either way, you can always just change the look of it. That'll give you a different effect. You're basically taking the fast noise pattern and you're just adding a little bit of randomization to it. Okay, and seethe rate, of course, that's the same as if you were to use the seethe rate on the water tool. It's just going to speed things up. It's going to speed up, make the changes in the pattern quicker. I usually leave it right around, you know, this is the default 0.181, which is just a random number that I picked up that just happened to look the way that I wanted it and that I was going to use the tool mostly. Flow control is very similar. It works just like it does in the water tool. If you want it to flow to the left, you just move the slider to the left into the negative realm. If you want it to move to the right, you just move it into the positive realm. And now your flow is going to be moving to the right. Still really cool. Still probably my favorite function of this tool. Liquid angle we already showed. You just basically change the angle of it. It's a little different. It works a little bit different than if you were to use an actual uh, transform because this tool, although you can't really tell, it's built on a 4K square. And then there's also this edge blur size. So in order to activate edge blur, you actually have to turn it on down here in the, uh, the edge blur blend. Once you turn the blend on, and then you can actually 
turn the size up or down. All it does is it slightly blends the actual edging here if you want it to look a little bit softer. By default, it's turned off again because this is more of a motion graphic tool. If you want it, it's there. Uh, you can also just easily throw a blur onto it. All right, so that's that. Let me go ahead and show you how I used it here. What I have here is uh, started off with the background, added in this uh, the CB liquid, and then I just merged it in with the blue background. Now, the reason it is merged in an overlay is the background itself is a blue gradient, but when you take a white mask or a white background and you merge it onto a blue background, you get a different levels of, of blue. You get a different look of effect. If I was to just leave this as normal, you're just going to get white on top of the blue background, which if that's what you're looking for, you know, you can do it that way. Uh, usually when I'm doing any kind of motion graphic stuff, I'll kind of play around with the blend modes in order to get something that looks a little bit more interesting. The nice thing about overlay is it's like using a multiply and a screen or some kind of additive mode. It keeps the highlights and it also retains the uh, the shadows or the darker parts of it. So that's pretty cool. I like the overlay, especially for doing things like this. And then it just merges into another background. And this other background is just a black solid. And I'm just using the blend here to, uh, to adjust how much, I'm just darkening it up a bit. One thing, um, you start to get into the principles of art and when you start bringing in a text and you merge it on top of something or or anything on top of something usually it's nice to be able to darken it up if you want whatever's in the foreground to stand out it's nice to be able to darken up the background in order to make it you know kind of fall into the back a little bit the boat that i actually brought in is just this clip art it's a vector image on a png so it has all of this transparency that's already retained all I wanted to do is, in this boat, I wanted to add this uh, liquid mask so that it could seem like it was actually in the water. So in order to do that, if I play this here, you can see it actually moves. It, it animates to simulate that the boat is in water, which I can't tell you how difficult this would have been if I was just animating like a polyline and trying to make it look realistic. I mean, that would have took a little while. This only took like 30 seconds just to set it all up. All I did is I threw in a CB liquid um, I flipped it upside down and then so this is transparent, this is white. I resized it because uh, I wanted it to be the size of the actual, the CB liquid, um, the way that it's working now, it's only in 1920 by 1080. So if you want to use it on something else, you're going to need to resize it. Say if you're using it on a 4K image, you're going to need to resize it to 4K. So I resized it to fit a little bit better in this specific image. I used a background just to color it, just because I wanted it to look a little bit different. And then uh, I transformed it, put it somewhere else, and then I animated it on a separate transform node. So I'm really big into stacking nodes, especially when you're transforming things, just to keep it a little bit easier and to organize things. That way, nothing gets messed up when you start changing around keyframes. You don't accidentally change the wrong keyframes. So this transform is just changing the size and then uh, this second transform is actually just animating it and we're animating it along a path. And the path is simply just, uh, you know, basically from left to right. And then I just added in some, some lines just to make it a little bit more wavy and follow the actual waves uh, a little bit better. So as you can see, as it animates, uh, it's moving from left to right, kind of moving in a slow fashion. I mean, this is completely stylized, right? This is kind of motion graphic -y. We could have some kind of... Uh, you know, reveal back here with the text as it goes by. Uh, you know, we're just making, you know, just kind of a silly little animation. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know, and that was done probably in about, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes that it took to do that. Let's go ahead and jump over to this next one where we do a little bit more motion graphic specific example. All right, so in this one, I haven't really given too many classes on basic motion graphics. I usually break up basic motion graphics into a background, a accent animation, and then some kind of text or text animation. We did something a little bit different here. And the way that we did it here was we actually moved the CB liquid. We changed the angle, right? So instead of just going you know, normal, it, it, we changed the angle a bit, and then we added it to a black background. And then we, in this merge, we actually use the edges mirror and then we moved the moved it up and then we turned this into a bitmap because since we merged it it's a little easier just to turn it into a bitmap so i moved it over to the left and then i merged it again over a blue uh, gradient 
course, when I merged it into the blue gradient, I overlaid it just so I could get different tones uh, within, but within the same color spectrum. So to make a really quick background, uh, we can just go ahead and shift space, add in the CBL. Now, one of the first things we're going to want to do is probably spin it. So we can go ahead and spin this maybe sideways, maybe like 90 degrees. You can even type in 90 over here on the side. And I'm actually going to drop the liquid level down a little bit. Maybe turn the wave height up a little. I'll give it just a little bit of flow. Now, if I press play, you'll see it's just kind of flowing downward. And now let's go ahead and maybe bring in a merge and a background. And in this merge node, we're actually going to change the edges from canvas over to mirror. Now, if I move this over, the wrong color, and Command T swaps those inputs. So if you if you don't see what you want to see, then that's that's probably your problem. All right, so now I can kind of bring this in. Um, I can also bring in a transform node after the fact, and I can start turning these. And because we have mirror on, what it's going to do is it's going to start doing interesting things, and in that it's uh, it's going to mirror whatever it's missing. We're going to probably need more backgrounds here. And now if we press play, we get kind of an interesting just wiggly line there. But if we were to take this CB liquid and we start playing with the actual liquid angle again, you're going to notice that we're getting even different things. And we start creating kind of like a kaleidoscope effect depending on where it actually is. So by all means, play around with this. Um, you can also, of course, use other modifiers to do different things. And then when you're ready to actually add some color, you can bring in yet another background. Again, Command T, swap those around. And then this background, we're actually going to do the merge. We're gonna overlay it and we're gonna give it some color. Maybe we'll, instead of solid color, let's go ahead and do a gradient. Change, we'll map the black, I don't know, maybe like a light blue. And then we'll map the white, eh, maybe just slightly darker blue. And there you go. Now you have an overlaid color on top of here, which is already giving us kind of, you know, just this, uh, you know, just interesting shape that's, you know, constantly moving and undulating. And then uh, this accent animation I'll kind of get into. I usually do the accent animation last and I just add it in. And it doesn't have to be in between the BG and the text. It can be at the end. It can be anywhere you want it. Sometimes the accent animation is something that is kind of like, you know, animating and flashing itself. Sometimes it's not. As this kind of moves around, you can see it's getting almost like a kaleidoscope effect using the liquid tool. And it, we just really quickly created a background. You can also blur this if you want it to be a little bit more blurry. You're probably not going to get enough blur out of, out of the actual background node itself. You're probably going to want to add in a, like a real blur, either a Gaussian blur or just a blur. And then you can just kind of turn that blur size up. If for whatever reason you just, you want it to be, you know, a little bit more blurred, you can do that if it's just standing out a little bit too much. So feel free to play around with that. And then in the text node, so in the text, all I did is I took some text and I, you know, I basically just um, threw in just a couple different styles where, you know, uh, I enabled some of these elements, like I enabled the element two, which is just a red outline. Of course, I didn't use it as a red outline, I used it as a black outline. Kind of showed how to do that in other tutorials. I added um, some drop shadow to it just here on the outside. Um, I animate it, and the way that I animated it, I just use a transform node and I just scaled it in the Y. And then of course I just added some bounce. You can see that it actually bounces a little bit. I showed how to do that actually in the last video where you add some bounce just using the uh, the spline editor. And then of course it just kind of merges in. But what the way that it merges in is we use this liquid. Right? And we animate this liquid over time, and then we transform it. I wanted to make it a little bit smaller so that um, it only covered the text. And then I bring in a, another text, and I color this one blue. And then I just used the... I had to throw in um, the same text animation, uh, and the reason I needed to use the same one was because um, I actually did this after the fact, adding this blue liquid in, and I still needed it to go away at the same time and I wanted to adjust the animations and I didn't want it to screw anything up. So I'm just merging this on top of 
and you can just throw this it doesn't have to be um, normal you can use it on multiply if you want to make sure that nothing else gets gets through but since we use the exact same text same size same everything uh, it shouldn't really be too much of an issue but if you do start changing things it'd be a little bit easier just to use the multiply and then we just jump into this accent animation and the way that I did this accent animation was really simple all I did was I added this TV node uh, which just adds noise. It's a noise generator, but it's it does something that's really interesting. Using the TV node, you can use the amplitude and the frequency, and you can start playing around, and it gives it some additional um, movement. And they're very like wiggly lines, uh, and it kind of starts to move and shift things in a in a very interesting way. I also added a little bit of power and a little bit of size to get this bar. I did not animate this bar, but you can. You can animate this bar if you want, um, just using the bar offset. You can change the uh, the location, or as I've showed in my uh, my TV effect, you can also just animate this if you wanted to by putting an equal sign in here, and then you could type in I don't know times asterisk uh, like 0.5, and then now that's going to animate over time. So as the time moves forward. Uh, this bar that's in the back is just going to move up and down. Well, it's actually just going to move up because it's in a positive. Because I, uh, I put in a 0.5 instead of a negative 0.5. In the future, I'm going to be making some more tools that help generate uh, motion graphics, backgrounds, and accent animations. As well as even do some kind of uh, text animations. Uh, I might even come up with like a glitch tool that just does a bunch of different types of glitches on whatever text you put in there. Got a lot of things planned this year. I hope you guys stick around. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.